Hello, my name is Janik Barmier from Porto Project and this video is the third installment in the series on dimensional analysis. In this presentation I will discuss the basic Nussel technique and I will present how the initial and the boundary condition yield dimensionless group. I also present the object oriented characteristic of Nussel technique. The transformation to different coordinate will be discussed and explored in another video. Basic Nussel technique involves three basic steps. The first step is writing the governing equation and the initial and boundary condition. The second step is selection of the characteristic time or characteristic dimensions, which is normally the most complicated step of all. And the third one and the last step is the conversion process. It's a very technical part, but I consider it to be the simplest part. And the best way to explain how Nusel method work is by example. And if we look on Newton law of cooling, here is a body that I draw just a while ago, showing that is in uniform temperature, where therefore the surface temperature is about the temperature inside the body, and it's immersed in a fluid with T infinity, that means the T of surrounding. The basic governing equation will be used to find the dimensionless group. And we will use the energy conservation to write the dimensionless group. That, f that is the mass rho V times the heat capacity times the temperature difference divided by some time that it will take to this energy to go. This energy have to be absorbed by the surrounding which is H, the heat, the heat the convection coefficient times the area times the temperature difference. The initial condition will be T at time equal to zero equal to T in. E. The characteristic length is actually can be derived using the geometrical things where LC the characteristic length is the volume divided by the area if we have perfect sphere it will be the radius the characteristic driving temperature will be the temperature the initial temperature of the body divided by the temperature of the surrounding the characteristic time is rho cp time lc divided by h and we deriving this thing from the obtaining it from the governing equation we just modify the governing equation and we can see notice that dt which is has the units of temperature and the temperature difference have temp temperature units as well and therefore they are kind of cancel we left with the characteristic time divided by time therefore to keep it dimensionless as it is because the temp the temperature is cancel we must have rho cp time lc divided by h as units of time and here is a typical thing that is done we define a temperature dimensionless temperature where it is the temp temperature and the instantaneous difference divided by initial difference and as suggested by the initial a uh, derivation the dimensionless time will be ht divided by rho cp l and that is kind of the time that it take to do something typical of a uh, temperature if t equal to zero we can show that the cur the dimensionless time is also equal to zero and the reason for that is if t equal to zero multiplying it by some constant also yield zero and therefore now we can go to the conversion of the initial condition a t temperature at t equal to zero has initial condition and therefore we can subtract from both side the temperature the surrounding temperature and divide it by the same difference we're going to get that this is the definition of 
the measureless time, that's for theta, and it has to be equal to 1 because this number is equal to 1. Similar technique used for the governing equation. The only thing is that I use, I put the reciprocal of the characteristic time. And now what I will do, I will subtract the, the temperature of the surrounding. If I subtract the temperature of the surrounding, I can insert it in, into the derivative. And the reason that I can insert it to the derivative because the derivative of something that is constant is zero. And therefore, if I can insert something that is zero, that is appropriate. And now I can divide it by the temperature difference here and here. And since the temperature difference is constant as well, I can ins change the definition and insert it to the derivative. We can notice that this thing is exactly the def definition of the dimensionless temperature. We have it as derivative and we have it as a function. And now we notice that we can also do the characteristic time, insert it to the derivative, and we have the dimensionless time appear here. And therefore we have basically a very simple equation, where in this equ equation we have the derivative of the dimensionless temperature equal to the temperature to the negative of the temperature. When the initial temperature, when the, in the initial uh, boundary condition in the dimensionless form is equal to 1. From this we can summarize that we have actually two parameters that are controlling this problem. The dimensionless temperature and the dimensionless time. If we want to know when this process is applicable or when it's really appropriate to use it, we can look at the body that, that I draw before and we can assume that, that heat transfer in the body is will be some kind of the temperature in the center minus the temperature of the surface divided by the characteristic length and when we then we can multiply it by the heat conduction coefficient k and that has to be some kind of proportional to the convection coefficient times the temperature difference the reason we are doing this comparing these two energy is to see whether or not the heat in the body is a uniform or not and if we do that and we ch play a little bit with this thing by moving k and lc to the other side we're going to get new dimensionless group this is dimensionless on that side that's temperature difference divided by temperature difference and this is must be also dimensionless this number is beyond number and beyond number is a number that represent how appropriate the Newton law of cooling. In this process we got three dimension and uh, in, in total two we got previously and now we got another one. I hope that you enjoyed this video and thank you for listening and hope to see you in the next video.